Hi everyone, this is Chrissy from InstallersbyChrissy.com and on this video, I do want to talk about the coronaviruses and my own prognosis and predictions on astrology. So, because a lot of people have been asking me, hey, what's really the case here? You know, whenever there is a pandemic or some form of crisis is happening to humanity, a lot of people will, you know, seek the occult, the mystical stuff, astrology. <laughs> Those are the only times they actually, you know, take notice of this and try maybe to seek help and clarity on that, which I don't really mind at all. But um, it just gives us that confirmation that this area of life is something that we we cannot just, you know, um, disregard because there are truths into the information, coincidental or not. So, yeah. Um, if you see me taking a look on this side of the screen, it means that I'm taking a look at the charts and on my iPad, which I will also share with you guys once I do the video processing. So, for me... Um, I believe that the starting point of this coronavirus occurred during August, August of 2019. Because of that new moon in the sign of Leo, it is also conjuncting um, Venus and Mars all at the same time. I did share this to a few of my clients way back that... Um, the Leo combination is not really that positive. Unlike what other people would say that Leo is all about fun, creativity, this is all about starting new things. I was more about scared of the fact that, you know, this can really make a lot of people be a lot more angrier. This can make a lot of people to exaggerate things or do something that is, you know, really out of the place like imagine trump getting so angry something like that you know because leo is a very dramatic sign it is all about self-expression it wants to get noticed you know it's you know something can really occur that can really notice by a whole lot of people and a lot of people might cry i mean leo the constellation of leo also has something to do with the heart so you know it's something that can really affect a whole lot of people to the core i would say and with the chart of this starting point of this coronaviruses this new moon is actually also on the eighth degree of the horoscope and as you all know the eighth degree is the sign of scorpio and which is all about rebirth to kill or be killed or you know i am a scorpio person so i'm not really being negative about scorpio but it is a fact that you know scorpio is a sign that stinks so there are a lot of transformation, a lot of painful stuff that can occur. And most of the time, eight degrees means that, you know, something to do with death as a whole. It is on the seventh house area of the chart of Wuhan, China, which is all about people. And this alignment is also, you know, it's in a quincunx connection to the Saturn, Saturn-Pluto conjunction along with the South Node. And it is on the 12th house, which is, you know, hosp hospital, the diseases and all of that. It is basically like at the point of the chart wherein you don't know, you know, you'll just be shocked once it hits you. That is the 12th house. It can be psychological. It can really traumatize a lot of people, those kinds of things. And the Queen Kongs is not an easy aspect in astrology. It's actually a frustrating one. And 
the Neptune they have in this chart is on the 18 degrees of the horoscope. 18 degrees can be a, a very difficult energy because as we all know that 18 degrees is being led to the sign of death as well, another death situation. Or it's like, it's not really the devil sign or something like that, but I do know that 18 degrees is also related to Virgo, I believe, or something. Let me count. <laughs> um, 12 is Pisces, 13 is Aries, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yes, so oh, it is Virgo, the sign of Virgo. So it is, um, Virgo is all about health, all about work, and it's also affecting the second house very near to Chiron at that time. So we know that this, you know, whatever shocking development is going to be transpiring for one China on this starting point would mean that something is happening to a lot of people right there. It could be behind the scenes, it could be, you know, something to do with the hospital, maybe getting a lot of sickness that they don't know yet at that time. They still don't know what's really going on right there, but it is affecting a lot of people. Maybe some are dying or some are, you know, just getting sick, which they don't know, maybe some form of fevers or something, because again, Leo is about heat, you know, it heats things up. That is why you would see that, you know, when there is someone that, you know, has a lot of Leo conjunction in their chart, they, they are easily to get excited, easily to get mad as a result. Also, during that time, they have um, Mercury in Cancer, which means that, you know, it can be very emotional. Like, there is something in the air that gives a cause for concern, especially with our loved ones, you know. So, also, this new moon is actually in a square to Uranus as well. And as you all know, Uranus and Taurus, it's like there could be some form of shocking endeavor. So on a good note though, this can just tell us that um, there could be a new beginning in terms of communications with the masses that, that can bring some form of alertness in them. I don't know how is that going to be positive, but in mundane astrology, it's actually easy to see the negative things on the, on, on the situation. Like, okay, Leo on the seventh house is square to the third house. That is like, there is something that you cannot control in terms of how you are with your everyday life. Third house is our daily life with the people that we meet every day and the seventh house with, with other people. So I don't know about you, but I do see the correlation of coronavirus in that um, alignment as well. It is also making a trine again to Jupiter at Sagittarius at that time. So this new moon in the sign of Leo is getting magnified like a huge kind of thing. But that is just the starting point. Now, I am going to take a look right now on what I believe is the chart of One China. So for me, the chart of One China would be on October 1st, 1926. I was actually debating on that whether I should put in 1927 because there are some stuff on the internet saying that 1927 was when Wuhan China became the capital. But I have noticed that 1926 is actually a very important year for Wuhan China because, you know, there were a lot of united thing happening during that time for them. So I kind of feel that is really the peak zone for them wherein, you know, things are all coming together for them in a um, positive way. So 
um, and in this chart, we have their Neptune in the sign of Leo. I am really focusing on Neptune just so other people who don't know about astrology would know that Neptune is actually the sign that tells us more about confusion, things that you don't know, and diseases when it comes to our health. So Neptune in sign of Leo, this is, you know, something that can, in a positive way, can really spark our creativity. Like, we always tend to be very inspired. We act from the heart, and it is something that can really give us a really good influence. If we take a look at this on a disease type of level, though, Neptune and Leo can be quite um, difficult because this is Leo. Leo is like the sign of the influencer. So when it comes to, to Neptune and Leo, it's like there is something that influences a huge mass of people. So a huge mass of people, you know, something is getting scattered in, in such a way that one cannot control. It's easily to affect someone during that time. And if we take a look on coronaviruses and, and one China's chart, it's like telling us that this is a disease that will, you know, that will be hard to control because can you even control a Leo? I mean, Leo is also the sign of presidency. That's usually what you see. And normal people like us cannot control a president. It is a president that controls um, the masses for the most part. But if you take a look at another level, once the people unite together, they can actually, you know, do something about that president. So let's take a look on that angle when it comes to coronavirus. Right now, it feels as if we are being repressed by the coronavirus. It's, uh, we, we feel very vulnerable by this disease and virus that is really scattering, scattering about. And there is no way to battle this yet. There is no certain cure to it, at least at the, the moment that I'm making this video. And right now, all we can do is pray together, be more united, be with our loved ones, stay at home, be quarantined. And there's really not much that we can do. So. It, it's like the, the manifestation of this energy, basically. We feel repressed. It's literally a lockdown scenario, if you ask me. It's actually happening in their eighth house as well. So eighth house is about death. It's about something that, you know, can give into crisis situation as well. And their moon is also in the sign of Leo, of course. So, you know, this can, you know, whatever disease is this, this can really give a big, big reaction and a big concern for a lot of people. I also mentioned this around last year, early last year. I'm pretty sure it was early last year on my Facebook account telling people to be more careful. Like I was saying that, be more careful with your heart. I was saying that and take a look on your health, focus on your health more, especially for women, mothers, women of all kind, because we do have the Rahu at that time in the sign of cancer. So I kind of feel that, you know, this can cause people to have heart attacks, um, heart problems, going to into the hospitals over something. I did mention that and take care of your mother, those kinds of things, because that can really happen. It was really not within my expectation, though, that this can result to a lot of death in a very literal sense. I do know, I was aware that a lot of people have been going to the hospitals and a lot of them were women as well, you know. So aside from the coronaviruses, there is already some form of signal and sign that um, diseases that triggers the heart or targets the heart is also of concern. So aside from the coronaviruses, um, 
there is a tendency that you know heart attacks, heart problem can be affected. So that is one of the few things that I have mentioned last year. Then their sun and Mercury is on the sign of Libra. On their ninth, around their ninth and tenth house, I would say. And Libra is all about the seventh house. And if we combine the the chart earlier from now, it's like okay, seventh house. That is the position of Libra. So we can say that, and the sun is all about vitality, right? So if we say something like that. We combine them. It's like saying something is happening in a very big way into the vitality of the uh, of some people or other people in one China. So astrology is like that. Also, Saturn in this chart is at the twenty two degrees of Scorpio. So. Again, this is a lot of triggering point. It triggers the Scorpio energy of the eight degrees, and the twenty-two de degrees is really a very scary、um, degree, to be honest, because it is the degree of to kill or be killed. You know, I will post maybe in the description below this video on where the degree theory in astrology can be found. It is from my teacher. So,、um, yeah. So I take a look on that as well. It is on the eleventh house of the horoscope. So this really tells us that you know eleventh house is the masses, and it's not just about the people that you meet every day. It's a whole lot of thing, whole lot of people. This is also the internet, you know. And. Eleven house is your acquaintance, people you know, even though you don't really meet on a daily basis. So, there is some form of tendency right there, and this Saturn in the eleven house is also in square to Neptune and Leo. So we know that there is some form of correlation right there between the eleven house and the eight house, like. Um, some form of disease that can kill a lot of people can、uh, manifest in that way, and also you know their second house has the seventeen degree again of Jupiter, which we already saw earlier. Earlier.、Um, Jupiter is in seventeen degree of Sagittarius, and and in a trine to the new moon in Leo. So, you know, you know, whenever certain degrees, you know, pops up in a chart of a person, or chart of an event, or something like this, you know, even though it's not on the same sign, it is like. Giving some form of activation once again, and this activation is causing their Jupiter in their second house in the sign of Aquarius, which is all about people, all about the masses, you know, affecting a group of humanity with their bodies or to what makes them feel safe and secure in the square to Mars. In the sign of Taurus, in the fifth house. So we do know right there that you know this this Mars is going to make a conjunction to Uranus and Taurus because that is how astrology works. You combine the chart of of the place. Or a birth chart of a person in combination to the transit that is happening on a certain day. So if we combine that, that will conjunct Mars. There, Mars and Uranus, and it will you know create this activation point, which eventually will lead to the prognosis of 
the coronavirus. So, so there is definitely a possibility, though, that the coronavirus has been, I don't know, maybe intentionally created. But at the same time, it can also be some form of mistake. Mistakenly done. Not really in a very intentional way because we're dealing with Neptune here. But in their chart, they have their 5th house and 11th house in opposition to each other. And this is Mars and Saturn. So this is not a very... very easy energy and that this is probably the reason also why one china has encountered a lot of crisis throughout the years but they have survived and they came out stronger than ever also um they are a sagittarius racing at the 24 degree of the horoscope, which is the um, galactic center. So, you know, when you, when you are aware of astrology, um, you will see everything coming together <laughs> by taking a look at the charts. You'll just see the correlations, whether you, you notice them or not. So, also, their Venus is also at the sign of Virgo during that time, and it is on the ninth house in opposition to their Uranus in the third house. So, ninth house and third house a lot to do with foreign lands and all of that. So, once that is triggered, it can affect even people in foreign lands. So which is what we are experiencing right now. Virgo is all about the health and Pisces is something that's unknown. We don't know what's really hitting us until it's already there. So it can really be surprising and shocking. Those kinds of things. Now, um, let's take a look on, I guess, um, the first case. With the first case of the coronavirus, again, there is also another activation of the sun in Sagittarius at the 8th degree. So if you will take notes on the things that I'm saying, you will see a lot of re repeating stuff like 8 degrees. Earlier, there was also 8 degrees in New Moon in the sign of Leo, right? Which is all about death. And then right now, we have... Sun in the sign of Sagittarius, December 1st, 2019 in Wuhan, China. And this is happening on their um, 10th house. And I did mention earlier that they are a Sagittarius rising, right? So this clearly tells us that there could be death in that place. So, and since 10th house is something we notice, it's something that goes in public, basically, and that is the first case that develops. That is the first case that we, we got aware of. So it doesn't mean that it started around December 1st. I believe that, you know, a few months back, it has been happening. Like I said, it probably started around August or before August. But I believe that, you know, the highlight where things are becoming very rampant was around August. But, you know, maybe around December 2019, it's, it cannot be um, disregarded anymore and we need to spread the word or it has to, I guess, gather about. So, um, yeah. And then they have their moon in the 12th house in the sign of Aquarius. And they have Aquarius rising. And like I said, 12th house is something like hospitals, things you don't know. And with the moon right there, you know, their Aquarius is actually in their second house, which is all about the body, energy, 
um, what makes you feel secure and you know it is being activated in the 12th house so that is like being in hospital so and or encountering some form of mystery that you don't know you feel as if some form of bad luck has struck you there is some form of energy like that and then again this moon is also in a square again to uranus at that time in the third house so whatever whatever this hospitalization happening it's spreading out it's spreading out and with the third um, third house being activated it, some form of communication is coming out into the surface of things so which has triggered a lot of fear to many people because it is also squaring to Scorpio in the ninth house. So this is the time wherein it actually spread to foreign lands, to the internet. You know, we we got informed that, you know, this is the event wherein we got our first case settled. Well, not really settled. We got our first case on coronavirus. Also, their Neptune during that time is already on the um, first house, which means that in the charts before, it was around in the eighth house, wherein maybe they don't know yet, and now it's in the first house, wherein, okay, the disease is really here. The disease is, has paid to where it is, that kind of thing. So, and it is on the 15th degree of their horoscope. So what is 15? Um, that is Gemini, I believe. And Gemini has a lot to do with the air, with the lungs, those kinds of stuff. And you will all, you guys would know that coronavirus has a lot to do with, you know, just being outside sometimes can really infect you touching something, inhaling something, those kinds of things. And that is really a very Gemini aspect into things. Now, so where do we really go from here? Now, let me just take a move on my chart wheel. Where do we go from here? Now that we have find, found out in the prognosis that this is all about all, all kinds of this. Oh, before I forget. Did you know that the new moon also is under the fixed star of, I believe, let me see, what's the name of that fixed star again? Atlas Australis. It is the donkey. And this is actually all about, about stop. You know, it causes people to stop. It's about sudden death danger, violent death, those kinds of things. So it's quite ominous, you know, having a new moon and then with a fixed star of death, it's like a start of something that can kill or something like that. So <clears throat> so it's not really a very wonderful <clears throat> aspect. But in astrology, <clears throat> whether we try to ignore it or not, it's it's there. We just probably try to not see them. However, it has its own perks because this is also the time we're in, you know, if you have watched my 2020 numerology predictions um, earlier this year, um, you will... Um, you will find out and remember I was telling about that the focus of the year is going to be part of the community. Community. I'm taking a look at my notes, by the way, which I have made during that time when I posted that video. So our friends and families are going to be very important. We would want to have some form of peacemaking into the world, into the society, and some form of union and trying to correct things is going to be in place so there is going to be a potential for success but we need to work on our foundation and society and this as a list fixed star yes it does have its scary aspect but 
it's also about unity and union. So um, yeah, there is some form of energy right there that can bring us to some form of new reality. And I was really saying this to a lot of people as well that I kind of feel that this energy of you know the coronaviruses and all of that people tend to learn from difficult experiences i don't know maybe we are just stubborn like we try to not learn i don't know i don't know if we try to not learn or we are just stubborn people who needs to experience some form of hardship first before we actually um we actually um, put our focus to things that we usually take for granted, those kinds of things. So let me first see if I miss out anything before we continue. Um, yeah, I think I did not mention the fact that their Neptune in the 2019 chart is also in conjunction to Pluto. So Neptune and Pluto are both of the planets that we usually will have no idea how to handle because they come in in ways that you cannot even touch, you know, that kind of thing. So, and it is in the sign of Cancer. And we have Rahu in Cancer at that time. So it's like, it's obviously going to be creating some form of manifestation. So again, 2019, we have the North Node or Rahu in the sign of Cancer. This is going to be activating the chart of Wuhan, China, having their, their own North Node and Pluto in a conjunction to Cancer. So in their seventh house. So you know, we can all see that, you know, the the puzzles are lining up together, giving us an idea that there is really something that is happening in, in there. So um, anyway, with my predictions that I did mention that this could get worse as well. Um, it's not something that can easily be resolved to be honest, because it's spreading like crazy. And when when it comes to astrology, this is not something we can fix in a blink of an eye. However, around, I would say, around May onwards, I kind of feel that this could actually intensify coronavirus, but with Venus is going also going to be retrograde in the sign of Gemini, this can allow us to take a look at things. We might experience something very, very difficult during that time. Especially since for Wu and China, this is also going to touch their sixth and seventh house. So this could be the time we're in. We try to find ways on how we can cure something. So I would say that it is the peak wherein things can get worse. At the, and at the same time, there is a chance for things to get resolved. Or at the very least, we are trying to find ways. We might have clues on how to handle this now. So also, it is this year, Rahu is also going to be in the sign of Gemini. So everything is falling into the Gemini zone of the chart. So the sixth house is, yes, the house of enemies, the house of the people that, or not really the people, but something that can cause a great concern. But it's like being aware of what is your enemy now. What, it, what is something that you need to kill or you need to defeat? At the same time, it is also at the position where in, when handled right, you will be able to, I would say, you will be able to 
do something, to overcome something, to be victorious in something. So there is that kind of possibility. So that is going to be the peak season for May. And then also, I just kind of feel that, you know, something gets controlled because Saturn is now entering the sign of Aquarius actually on the on the day that I'm actually making this video, Saturn already is in the sign of Aquarius. And as it slowly conjuncts um, their Jupiter, I just kind of feel that, you know, something that was out of control can be controlled this time around. So that would be on May 2020. So, but when I was scrolling through the chart, just like scanning, to when this can be stopped, the only position that I find it possible, I think I've written this on my, my notes. Yeah, I have written down over here. But so here on my notes, it's, it's going to be on for predictions for the coronaviruses on mid-May 2020, it's going to be time where we are going to be fighting back the disease. And then this Saturn and Pluto conjunction is going to start controlling it, maybe controlling the masses as well, or controlling something, or we are going to find out, invent something. Or, you know, there is something smart about how we do things this time around. And then, yeah, with this Rahu in Gemini and Venus and Mercury also joining into the sign of Gemini, there is a chance that, you know, some form of blessing can come about. Some form of good news can actually transpire and happen. And around September of 2020, there is a chance that, you know, this can be the time we're in. We start feeling safe. We start feeling settled down because on the chart of September 2020 on Wuhan, China, they start to, to have happy moments again. And I would say that this can happen if they don't let their guard down because for September, for September, let's see, for September, um, their Venus is all is going to conjunct, sorry, Neptune in Leo is going to conjunct Venus in Leo. So this can either give us some form of grace grace from all of the negative things that has happened or this could get worse so but i am of course thinking in on a positive note that there are chances that this you know we might just be able to resolve things and things might get settled down and there is going to be more happy events that can transpire as a result because they do have a lot of a harmonia, harmonious aspect on that um, month. So, so I would say that around September, things are going to start dying down and things are going to be better as a result. I just hope though that they don't let their guard down. People don't let their guard down, not just one China. So um, yeah, because around October, um, Around October, Saturn enters back into Capricorn. So, you know, maybe, maybe people tend to forget the lessons they ha that they have learned from this coronavirus if, if, if it ever dies down. But um, yeah, I do hope that this is going to, you know, create lessons for humanity as a whole. But I would say that this is going to be around September 2020 that things finally settle down, die down, and some form of 
better days are going to come ahead as a result. So I'm, I'm, I didn't really take a look in this in a very, very detailed manner to check when it actually dies down. But um, yeah, those are the things that I am seeing on the chart and for coronavirus. And I do believe that, you know, this Aries season can make us feel much more empowered, like we don't feel weak anymore. We can fight for ourselves and for what is right. And you will see this in the coming months ahead. So I made this video so that you guys will understand how it all works. And you will have the hope and clarity that, you know, things are also going to end. So, um, so hey guys. Um, this is just a very, very quick addition to the videos that I have been recording. I was actually doing the video processing earlier and I noticed that, you know, there was something I wanted to say and share to everyone, which I did not um, put so much emphasis on the previous um, recordings and clips that I made um, for the past few days. And it was about giving emphasis to the North Node that is happening since 2019. And I've mentioned this part of the video that North Node in Cancer, Rahu in Cancer, was highly affected. You know, um, Cancer has a lot to do with families, with the heart, with our emotions, with females in general. Um, cancer is the sign about the caregiver, the one that gives, the one that takes care of something, those kinds of things. So, and this has, you know, put a lot of focus to getting yourself checked in the hospital, caring about your loved ones, um, focusing on what is good for your own family because, um, cancer is the sign that is very, very much family oriented as well. And we are, you know, that is also the trigger point wherein we can really fight for the sake of our own family. Now that Rahu, the North Node, is going to enter the sign of Gemini, and it has been in the zone of Gemini even before it actually entered. So that is probably the reason why we are seeing a lot of, you know, Gemini qualities that are manifesting in the skies. Like, for example, this virus, coronavirus, is a manifestation of, yes, it has a form of cancer, but I kind of feel that it has a manifestation of Gemini as well because it has a lot to do with the lungs, also with the hands, you know, just like what they say, keep your hands to yourself because, you know, just touching someone, touching something can really infect you. And, you know, it can create a lot of permanent damage at the same time. Also, if you guys would notice, especially in the social media, which I'm not very active, but I've been hearing about this for a lot of people, a lot of clients and with my friends as well, that there are a lot of fake news as well. And Gemini is a very chatty sign. So even last year, I was telling my friends that, you know, Rahu is going to enter the sign of Gemini. So I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure that there's going to be a lot of gossips surrounding about, you know, something that's very exaggerated. Though at that time, I really don't know how it can manifest. I mean, gossips are gossips wherever you go, no matter what country you are right now or or in the future. But um, yeah, so be careful of the news that you see and read online, especially online. You know, it's easy to make something viral nowadays. It's easy to share information, which you have no idea if it's actually true or not. So you just need to be a lot more smarter and a lot more open and be able to discern in what is right, what is valid and what's not. So, um, yeah, 
just be careful about that because on May, that is going to enter the field of Gemini and that is just going to make things a lot more official. But of course, it is my hopes and um, desire that things will finally settle down. I mean, we all need that. I just also feel that this is like a beginning for a lot of us to the humanity of a new era. So there will be times wherein we might feel as if we are shifting to some form of a highly more technological world, I guess, you know, wherein the things that we do before are not going to be the things that is going to be existing into our reality from here and in the future.